This is Antarctica, the most mysterious continent that remains largely unexplored by humans. It's home to unusual wildlife, underground lakes, the blood waterfalls, and buried cities, all contributing to a host of unsolved myths. The extreme conditions, with temperatures plummeting to minus 90 degrees Celsius, and blizzards reaching speeds of 300 kilometers per hour, mean that no humans live there. However, the distance from one side of Antarctica to the other is comparable to the distance from the Canadian Arctic to Mexico, which makes it the fifth largest continent. If Antarctica were placed over Europe, it would span from Norway and Finland to Iran and Iraq, reaching past Ireland into the mid-Atlantic. The nearest inhabited location is Ushuaia, Argentina, which is about 1,000 kilometers away. To reach Ushuaia, Travelers must cross the dangerous Drake Passage, where waves can go as high as 20 meters during extreme weather. Still, these tough conditions haven't stopped countries from competing for control of Antarctica for centuries. France claims the southeast corner, Norway the north, and Australia the entire eastern side, while New Zealand claims the south. Meanwhile, Britain, Chile, and Argentina assert their rights over regions in the west. This territorial competition raises questions about what lies beneath the ice that attracts the attention of the world's superpowers. Is there a hidden mystery waiting to be discovered? Let's find out who first discovered Antarctica. That depends on whom you ask. The British say they found Antarctica first while the Russians claim they did. The funny part is that mentions of Antarctica go back to Aristotle, who believed the Earth was round and had opposite poles. In 2021, a study by the Royal Society of New Zealand suggested that the Maori people might have been the first humans to reach Antarctica in the 7th century, as their stories talk about a frozen land to the south. In recorded history, British officer James Cook was the first European to cross the Antarctic Circle. He got within 130 kilometers of Antarctica, but turned back because of icebergs and dangerous sea conditions. When Cook couldn't cook up a complete expedition there, many explorers tried and failed as well. Finally, in 1819, the Russian Empire sent explorer Fabian von Bellingshausen to sail around the world, and the next year, he became the first modern person to view this continent. Later, in 1911, British explorer Robert Falcon Scott landed and traveled 400 miles inland, but had to turn back because of bad weather and hunger, leading to the loss of his entire team. Even during World War II in 1939, on Hitler's orders, the German Air Force dropped Nazi flags in Antarctica to establish control. All the proper research started after World War II, and that's the time they made some shocking discoveries. Scientists from Imperial College London found fossilized wood, showing that around 90 million years ago, Antarctica was a warm continent covered in dense forests, much like the Amazon. But now all these lie under its thick ice sheet, which covers over 98% of its surface. The thickness is more than two kilometers, and in some places, it reaches nearly five kilometers, nearly the height of six Burj Khalifas, the tallest building in the world. This is why 61% of all the fresh water on Earth is trapped in Antarctica's ice sheet. If the entire ice sheet melted, global sea levels could rise by about 60 meters causing disastrous consequences, including flooding Florida and most of the U.S. Gulf and East Coasts. This thick ice sheet hides so many mysteries from human eyes that now we know more about Mars than about what lies beneath the ice in Antarctica. Instead of drilling through kilometers of ice, we mainly explore Antarctica's hidden features by flying planes with special technology that uses radio waves. These waves go through the ice and bounce back, helping us analyze what's beneath. What we do know by now is quite interesting. Antarctica isn't just one big piece of land. If the ice melted, Greater Antarctica would be about the size of Australia, which has ancient rocks. On the contrary, Lesser Antarctica, which includes the Antarctic Peninsula, would turn into a group of mountainous islands with sedimentary and volcanic rocks. This region is located in the tectonically active Great Pacific Ring of Fire. This area includes Mount Erebus, the tallest active volcano in Antarctica, which has a lava lake and has reached temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius in ice caves that could hide undiscovered life, even with the harsh conditions. In 2017, researchers from the Australian National University found DNA from algae, mosses, 
and small animals in soil samples taken from a cave system beneath Mount Erebus. What's striking is most of them were completely unknown species. Using radio echo sounding, scientists have uncovered a complex landscape beneath the ice, including the Denman Glacier, which has the deepest canyon on Earth that goes 3.5 kilometers below sea level. In the late 1950s, researchers discovered the Gambertsev mountain range buried under more than 600 meters of ice, stretching 1,200 kilometers, with peaks reaching up to 2,700 meters. Additionally, a large gravity anomaly found in East Antarctica suggests there might be an ancient meteorite impact crater that is 480 kilometers wide. This is possibly the largest known crater, nearly three times bigger than the Chicxulub crater, which caused the dinosaur's extinction. However, no direct samples have confirmed this theory. The reason? The remoteness of the area. Researchers believe this crater formed between 100 and 500 million years ago during the Rift Valley's formation, which happened around 100 million years ago. This timing aligns with the Permian-Triassic extinction event, which wiped out 57% of biological families and 81% of marine species about 252 million years ago. But there's more. Researchers have found about 675 lakes hidden beneath the Antarctic ice, with Lake Vostok being the largest, located about four kilometers below the surface. Its water is minus three degrees Celsius, which is below freezing, but stays liquid thanks to heat from geothermal vents. This ancient lake has been sealed for at least 15 million years and may contain unique life forms. In 2012, Russian scientists drilled nearly four kilometers deep to collect water samples, but they found contamination issues with the possibility of unknown bacteria. In 2020, researchers again discovered new bacterial species and an rRNA sequence similar to a fish found in Lake Vostok, hinting at a possible unknown fish species. In December 2021, scientists melted a hole in a glacier in West Antarctica and found a large cave 500 meters below the surface, filled with thriving amphipods which are shrimp-like creatures never seen before on Earth. These unexpected findings suggest that complex life can exist in isolated places like Lake Vostok. But we haven't told you about the greatest discovery yet. That can change everything. Believe it or not, Antarctica has significant energy resources, like oil, gas, and coal, due to its warmer climate in the past. It means the world's dependence on Russia and the Middle East for oil would drop if we can access Antarctica, bringing a drastic change in geopolitics. In May 2024, a Russian research ship in the Weddell Sea found a huge oil field with an estimated 511 billion barrels, which is valued at around $44 trillion. Then why isn't any country fighting over it? Since the late 1950s, seven countries, New Zealand, Australia, France, and Norway among them, have made territorial claims in Antarctica. This situation led to the 1959 Antarctic Treaty, which promotes peaceful scientific research, restricts military activities, and prohibits nuclear tests and waste dumping here. As of 2024, more than 55 countries have active research stations in Antarctica. Argentina and Chile have permanent civilian settlements there. In the 1970s and 80s, both countries sent pregnant women to give birth in Antarctica to strengthen their claims. For example, Emilio Marcos de Palma, born on January 7, 1978, was the first person born on the continent. Argentina and the UK have a long-standing disagreement over the Falkland Islands, South Georgia, and the South Sandwich Islands. The recent discovery of 511 billion barrels of oil in Antarctica could revive the dispute again. Recently, climate change is causing ice in the Weddell Sea to thin, making access easier. But working in such a remote area poses big challenges. Plus, extracting oil and delivering it is still financially risky. Only if Argentina's economy improves, it could strengthen its claim to the Falkland Islands, quickly positioning them as one of the most important countries overnight. What do you think about that? How would it affect the world if this were to ever happen? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more intriguing updates like this, and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.